you know, I forged my parents' signature, which, whew, look, I was a minor. You can, like, retroactively, like, arrest me or something, I don't know. Do whatever you want. Sam has a really big butthole and no, it's No, no, it's, it's normal size. Terrifying. It's normal it's sized. Terrifying. It's normal sized. Kanika smells. Hey guys, it's Kanika. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my lived experiences as a female sociopath and I'm going to discuss a little bit into what the difference is between a male sociopath and a female sociopath. Please make sure you like and subscribe and also if you could donate to Variety for me, for my Miss World journey. I would really appreciate that. We're getting together to help a lot of children who are disadvantaged and disenfranchised. So any help would be greatly appreciated. So I had my makeup done by Fox Wild, who did basically everything, and then I kind of ruined the mouth area by eating. So I did the lipstick, and that's why it doesn't look great. But, you know, she is incredible. I will link her in the description, just go and see what she has to offer, it's just, I love her so much. So there's a huge difference when it comes to male sociopaths and female sociopaths in the way that they act and the way that they are treated. This is obviously due to sex based biases in society as well as, you know, in medical literature. First of all, of course, a female is far less likely to be diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder in the first place. Usually when a woman exhibits the signs of it, they'll go into a psychiatrist's office and be told, nope, you have BPD. And obviously this is very harmful to be misdiagnosed. It's because women are not expected to do stuff that is antisocial, right? Women are meant to be kind, nurturing, caring, you know, motherly. They're meant to be softer, weaker, smaller. Basically, they cannot imagine what a female sociopath or psychopath would actually be like in real life. And this is somewhat based in reality because female sociopaths and psychopaths are different from their male counterparts. This is primarily seen, firstly, in physical aggression. Men do tend to be more physically violent. I'm not saying that as a you know stereotype, I'm not trying to blame men in general. Women tend to show their aggression in different ways, especially when it comes to psychopathy and sociopathy. So while we do not engage in physical altercations, we go out of our way to kind of manipulate and do things in an underhanded way, like very underhanded. We don't have the same sort of aggression to us that's visible because women are routinely punished for any behavior that is considered antisocial. If we are not actively pro-social, we are demonized and attacked and vilified. Let me give you an example. So when that article went live about me, it mentioned that I was a cheater, essentially. That I was cheating on all my partners. And the main backlash that I got was from men. So I got tons and tons of like, not only just death threats and rape threats and people telling me to, you know, commit suicide. I was subject to the most biblical like, insults, like being called a whore and a slut and just, all of these things because I had put, had shown any sign of antisocial behavior. And women are not allowed to do that. That's just unacceptable. So first thing I wanted to clarify this. When I cheated, it was not sexual. I am not a promiscuous person. I've never been one and I never intend to be one. That's just not who I am. When I was cheating, it was very much just getting that sort of narc supply from other people by going on dates and going out for a nice dinner somewhere where you wouldn't normally go with your partner because they don't like that kind of food. Like it wasn't something that was sexual or that intimate. Because of that, like I was just subject to the most heinous comments and none of them seemed to be women. But the thing is, 
Pro-social behaviour is considered so important for women to do. If we are not smiley enough, if we don't, you know, we're not nice, if we are assertive in any way, shape or form, there's something wrong with us. We're a bitch, we're bossy, blah, blah, blah. I'm not trying to make this a feminist rant by any means because, you know, I don't fully identify with the current feminist label and there are plenty of problems over there with that whole situation. But essentially my point is this, women are expected to be pro-social all the time. Something that people don't really realize is that female sociopaths are treated differently to male sociopaths in many ways. Not only just the physical aggression and manipulative behavior, but also it's socially acceptable for a woman to be parasitic. It's not seen as a negative or sociopathic trait. Women are generally raised to believe that they should rely on men for support throughout their life, either financial, physical, emotional, you know, that sort of thing. And if a man is parasitic, it, it comes across as very sociopathic. But if a woman does it, it's considered a norm. So obviously men have it a bit rougher there because women can really get away with it even though it is quite sociopathic in and of itself but that's another double standard that i've seen the love bombing associated with female sociopaths also tends to be quite different to that of male sociopaths and this can be seen in a number of ways but first and foremost women cannot be seen as emotionally clingy or wanting your attention 24 7 because if you're a male and you're love bombing a girl she loves that attention right it's normal for a man to pursue a woman but for a woman to pursue a man makes her look desperate and generally unviable as a dating prospect and so women who are sociopaths have changed up the whole love bombing situation so instead of making it an emotional thing, it becomes more of a sexual thing. So they will not necessarily be promiscuous and have sex with you, but they will have the ability to make you believe that they will. Like they'll make you believe that they're very, you know, adventurous and they like exactly the same things you like. They'll often go into great detail about how much similarity there is in your personality. Like there's a lot of things that females do. So female sociopaths kind of base this on manipulation again. And they know that the way to manipulate a man is through, you know, sexual activity for the most part. Not to sound too smutty or whatever, but it's generally that way. And Men tend to, of course, just go down the emotional route and show a woman that she is so special, that she's the only one for him, that she is everything he's been looking for in a partner. It's pretty easy for a man to love bomb a woman. For a woman to love bomb a man, she needs some special talent because it's not as easy as just texting him constantly. He's going to run in the opposite direction as soon as he can. So I'm a narc and I obviously love being chased. So I have guys that have gotten obsessed who would say that they want to marry me, that I'm the only girl for them. And these are not sociopathic men for the most part. One of them was. So I, it's, it's different. I just go along with it. I just gloss over that shit. I know that it's not true entirely. I know that they're not going to run off and try to get married to me. Although someone did propose in three weeks. so. The thing is, for me, I obviously like when someone is interested in another person, they pretend to like the same things as them. I kind of take this to another level. I do my research and even if I know nothing about a subject, I'll be like, no, that really interests me. It means so much. I also, for previous ex, I pretended like I did so much research into cars. And I was like, no, I love hearing about cars. I love all of this. And obviously it made me so bored. I wanted to like stick a fucking fork in my eyeball to get out of there. But that's what I tend to do. I, I take it to another level. And that can be seen a lot with female sociopaths. They somehow always know what you love. And they know 
how much you love it and what you are willing to do to get it. I'm not sure if all female sociopaths or psychopaths are like this, but I tend to get fixated on things very quickly and I'll want to absorb all of that information and put it into play as soon as possible post haste from yesterday from 10 years ago I just want it done and then that's that's the same with people like I'm just so interested in someone and I'm just over the moon all that sort of shit the seeing stars and and then after about five minutes I'm like yeah I didn't really think this one through I really want to go home right now so that's something that's really prevalent that I've noticed in myself and a couple of my friends is that our fixations tend to disappear, disappear just as quickly as they arrived. Female sociopaths also tend to be very reckless and impulsive. Now while in a man this could mean starting fist fights on the street for no reason or beating someone up for being rude when they were driving, you know, road rage. For me, it manifested more in my interpersonal relationships and what I was doing in my life. So let me just tell you what happened with, like, I have a history of not dealing well with jobs. So I'm going to start off with a job that I did probably two years ago now, but it was a big deal to me. So I was doing really well. I was working in sales for a certain publication and we managed advertising and all that sort of stuff. And I was doing really well, like really, really, really well. Like not to toot my own horn, but I was earning the most commission out of anyone who was there. And so I got really, really happy with this and I got headhunted by the opposite publishing house, essentially. And I was like, hmm, I do want to move to Queensland. So I told my boss who I was working for in Sydney at that time, I told her that I was feeling really sick and that I needed to go home and I wouldn't be in for the next few days. What I actually did though was I had already gotten the job in Queensland, right? So I just packed my bag, I flew to Queensland and started a new job on the day that I was like at home sick. And then when I arrived there, it was so dreary. The Whit Sunday is like my favorite place to go to in Australia other than Cairns. So I was expecting like a magical sort of job to be just as magical as the blue water and everything. But what really happened was it was like the office. It was just three or four old people and someone who clearly hadn't left the state in about 40 years. And I'd be stuck in a little corner on a desk and make calls a lot. And I just figured this isn't something I need. So I faked a stomach ache, told them I'd be coming back the next day, but instead I left the keys to the car that they'd given me on the desk. I went home to my Airbnb, packed my bags and flew home to Sydney and then blocked them because I didn't want them calling me. And then I just went right back to my other job. So I have a pretty checkered history with being responsible. I don't really handle responsibility very well. And this is something that I've definitely tried to change. But this was seen like in my earliest behavior as a 13 year old. I really, really wanted this handbag from Louis Vuitton. And I, my parents were like, fuck no, I'm not gonna pay for that. And I was like, oh, all right, fine. I'll find a job. In Australia, the legal working age is 14 years and nine months. But if you're 14, you can get a signature from your parents with the consent to work. I personally was 13. I went to get a job at Baker's Delight. You know, I forged my parents' signature, which... Whew, look, I was a minor. You can, like, retroactively, like, arrest me or something. I don't know. Do whatever you want. I literally just saved up till I had enough money for the bag. And then I just blocked them, too, because I didn't want them to call me anymore. So yeah, I, I don't have the best history when it comes to holding down a job or having any sort of stable future because I don't think about the future. I don't have anxiety because anxiety means you are thinking about the future. That's just not something I do. And I think that this is something that is seen in many, many female sociopaths and psychopaths. So that's why we kind of like leave jobs, leave partners. It's just so common. It is really, really common in the female sociopath. And it's just characterized as being flaky rather than a pervasive 
pattern of behavior, which is, you know, questionable. I know I was laughing and I don't want it to be perceived as me, you know, being happy about the things that I've done. I recognize that they're pretty horrible things to do and I would never repeat that behavior. I have learned that it's, I should probably deal with my responsibilities instead of running away. And while I don't have remorse, I do have hindsight. So I, I know that that was kind of shitty behavior and I'm not condoning it. The thing about ASPD, and this is not exclusive to females of course, is that we have so many wonderful characteristics that we can ch channel into good things. That we can become successful in business. We can become great friends, great partners. We can do all of these constructive things and help others, but we are kind of squandering them and, you know, being the worst. We're being toxic, we're being like harmful to people around us. We have attained this reputation because obviously we've done some horrible shit and we need to own up to it and we need to change. I think we all have it in us to do so. I mean, why not use that lack of anxiety and that drive to succeed in a new business or to climb the corporate ladder? Why not do that instead of cheating or hurting a partner, instead of just dropping all of our responsibilities why don't we just use what we have and make the most of it? That's what I don't really understand. And I, I hope that we can create this community where we can discuss these ideas and not be ostracized. Because ostracizing such a volatile group of people can result in nothing positive. That's all I'm saying. There's, it's just not a good idea. We don't want to ostracize people with antisocial personality. We want to create unity, if you will. We need to have an open dialogue. We need to do things that will help us prosper and help the people around us prosper. And so the articles are no longer gonna be how to avoid the sociopath or are you dating a sociopath? Here are the signs. We don't want that. We wanna show what we have to offer, not our drawbacks essentially if you guys get what I'm saying. If we get together and combine we could be some of the most successful people on the planet. We are the most likely to succeed because of the lack of anxiety, because of the ability to transcend these limitations that are put on society and particularly neurotypicals. We really need to become one driving force. We will achieve so much if we're able to do that and also I would love to hear your opinions what do you think the differences are between a male sociopath and a female sociopath from your own experience and what you've experienced with other people I'm fascinated to know and I, I love reading what you guys have to say I know I don't get to every comment but I absolutely love 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 having a read and you guys are so interesting. So if you have anything, just put it in the comments below and I will definitely check that out. So I'm gonna wrap up this video, otherwise I'll keep rambling and you guys know how I waffle on certain issues. If you have any other ideas or you want me to answer anything else, again, just comment it below and I will get to you. If you have any particular thoughts or questions or whatever, you can DM me on Instagram at Kanika Batra. I'll be sure to, like, I know they're piling up, but I'm going to go through them all and I will get to you. So make sure to reach out to me there. I'm available on Snapchat as well and Facebook. All of that is in the box below. Thank you so much for watching.